get confused going between that and the gospel and the
Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to our service. We're just going to spend a moment now preparing to worship before we sing our first hymn. So, and welcome to you who are, who are here perhaps for the first time and our Baptist family. Um, we'll guide you through the service, so don't worry at all. In our reading today, we'll be challenged to think about our hearts and where they are in relation to God. I wonder where your heart is this morning, how close to God you're feeling. Well, if you're not feeling that close, you're in the right place. So let's just be quiet in the presence of God now, drawing close to him as we pray for our worship this morning. Loving Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this service. And we thank you that we can draw close to you in this church, in this, your home, which is our home too. Amen. And so let's sing now together hymn number 12, Alleluia, sing to Jesus.
seated. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, it's wonderful to have the baptism of Finley and Ruby this morning. And they've come with their parents, Lu Lucy and Rory, and their godparents all seated here up front, and their friends and family. So a especially warm welcome to you this morning. And welcome, of course, to all of you lovely regulars here today. At our Lord's baptism in the River Jordan, God showed himself to all who have eyes to see and ears to hear. The Father spoke from heaven, the Spirit descended as a dove, and Jesus was anointed with power from on high. Here is the door of faith through which we enter the kingdom of heaven as children of God, we are adopted as his daughters and sons and called to proclaim the wonders of him who called us out of darkness into his marvellous light. And so I'll now say the collect prayer for today. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were reconciling the world to yourself, Help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you, through him who has lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we're going to listen to God's word. And we're going to stand for the gospel reading that Wendy will read to us. And then Wendy will do our sermon, followed by prayers. And then we will have the baptism. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honours me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again to him and said to them, listen to me all of you and understand there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile, for it is from within, from the human that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, 
deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they do person. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please take a seat. I'd like to pray um, using a prayer of St. Augustine of Hippo, whose festival was yesterday. So let's pray. Eternal God, who are the light of the minds that know you, the joy of the hearts that love you, and the strength of the wills that serve you, grant us so to know you that we may truly love you, and so to love you that we may fully serve you, whom to serve is perfect freedom. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Welcome to our service today, a very special occasion where we will welcome Ruby and Finley into the family of God, his church. Um, so this will be a very few short points of a sermon thankfully, so we can get on to the most important bit of the service. I'm afraid I ruined this summer by buying a t-shirt that said, Hello Sunshine. <laughs> we haven't used it very often until today. <sighs> Typical. But because the weather was a bit, am I allowed to say pants in church? Because the weather was a bit disappointing, um, we watched a lot of the Olympics and also the Paralympics. And I think it was amazing. We watched the synchronized swimming that's now called artistic swimming. It was amazing. And things like the BMX and the skateboarding that I would never have thought of watching before. Wonderful. And it struck me as a passionate football supporter, and I know there are several in the congregation, that sports people have a lot of human traditions and rules and routines. They have their lucky socks. They choose a particular thing to wear or thing to do as they go out on the pitch. And I watched Djokovic serving, bouncing the ball seven or eight times. Do you know, he once played a match point with Andy Murray and bounced it 29 times. Why? This is his human tradition. He's a wonderful tennis player, number one in the world for over six years. And it made me think, as I was pondering my sermon, what our human traditions are. Now, God gave sensible, health-giving commandments to the people of Israel about washing hands thoroughly. We get that more now, don't we? And washing things that come from the market. Do you still do that? <laughs> um, and eating animals that feed on grass rather than any old thing. I'm afraid to say that pigs will eat anything, anything. Carrion, rotten stuff, anything. That's why they weren't allowed to eat them. But these health-giving commandments of God became human traditions that laid a great burden on people. And the religious leaders gave a good old dig at Jesus' disciples in our reading. So what did Jesus say? Outward traditions and rules don't make us holy. What is outside doesn't make us clean or nice people. It's what's inside in our hearts. Now baptism is an outward sign, but it's not just that not just a sprinkling of water. It's a sign of something inside. We ask God to dwell within Ruby and Finley, yeah. To live within you, 
to make you clean, to bring you part of the family, and to acknowledge the start of a journey into life with God from the inside so that it will show outside. Now, I hope that you had a chance to get away even for day trips with your friends and family this summer. I was very blessed. We went to the south coast and the weather wasn't great. My grandson, who's three, and I flew his kite. It was fabulous. I don't know whether this is going to work or not, folks. So forgive me if it goes down like a lead balloon. But here is his kite. What is it? Can anybody guess what it is? An octopus. How many legs has it got, Ruby? Do you know? Eight, yes. And look how colourful they are. Isn't that amazing? And do you know, this reading that we had today became real to me. I was pondering while we were on holiday. This kite is pretty cool on the outside. But that's not what it's there for. What's its purpose? To, to fly. And it can't fly without wind. Now, I don't know if this is going to work. But let's try and see if we can get it to fly by ourselves. Here we are. Here we go. This is cool. It has three speeds. It's not going to work, let's face it, is it? I will put it up on the pulpit in a minute, but the kite is just like us. We ask God's Spirit to live within us at baptism, and one of the words used in the scriptures for the Holy Spirit is ruach. It sounds like wind, doesn't it, Tamsin and, and um, Hattie and Aubrey? It sounds like wind, ruach. And this is the Holy Spirit of God that we will ask to be in Ruby and Finley at their baptism and in us to help to fill us, to help us to fulfill our purpose in life. Now, a kite can't fill by itself. It needs to rest and be lifted up by the wind. And in our journey of faith, let's face it, sometimes, like a kite, there's ups and downs. But every day, we need to ask for God himself to fill us with his presence through the Holy Spirit and to know that in our heart. God's Holy Spirit flying us like a kite should make a real difference in our lives. So, no matter what's happening inside, outside, God within us should make a difference. Ponder for a moment what God's presence means for you. It may mean hope or peace or joy, or trust, or protection, or reassurance. God's presence is within us. Amen, and may God bless to us this reflection on his word. Amen. So we come to a short time of prayer. And the response to the prayers is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah. Yeah. God hears us. Yeah. He's a smiley. Oh, thank God. Lord, we thank you that you are a God of love and mercy. Thank you for your presence with us. We pray for your church throughout the world, your family, which you fill with your Holy Spirit. And we pray for all Christians who are persecuted, all who suffer in war, famine, for natural disasters like the hurricane heading for the States, but especially 
Afghanistan. Lord, may the oppressed refugees, the poor and needy, know your presence that you promised to be with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Lord, we thank you for our local area, for our Archbishop Justin and our local bishops, for our Oxted team ministry and the future of our community for which so many people give their time and talents. Thank you and we pray for Anna, Mary, Lotwina, Charles and their families. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for your world, for a way we can combat climate change positively to impact our world's future. Give world leaders wisdom, we pray, bring justice and peace. And we thank you for the Olympics and Paralympics that gave us joy. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you for all our children and young people as they prepare to return to school. Protect them. Help them to know that true wisdom comes from heaven through the indwelling of God in his Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for all who are struggling in body, mind or spirit at this time. For all people we know who need our prayers. We pray for all people in hospital, for those ill at home, for people in local care homes. We pray for your comfort, your peace and your indwelling for those we remember in a moment of silence. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> Father, thank you that your Holy Spirit is the deposit that you live within us for a start of our life eternal to be with you. And we thank you for the life and witness of our Kenbush. And we thank you that he is resting in peace and will rise in glory. We pray for Diana and all the family that you would bless them at this time with your peace. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, another prayer of St. Augustine, Bishop of Hippo. Lord, our God, we are in the shadow of your wings. Protect us and bear us up. You will care for us as if we were little children, even to our old age. When you are our strength, we are strong. But when we are our own strength, we are weak. Our good always lives in your presence and we suffer when we turn our faces from you. So we now return to you, O oh Lord, that we may never turn away again. Amen. And Father God, finally, we thank you for Finley and Ruby, who are here with us this morning, soon to be brought into the family of God. We pray for your infilling of Ruby and Finley as they join your church, for happiness, for contented life, and good friends to surround them on their walk of faith. We also pray for Finley and Ruby's parents, Rory and Lucy, and for their godparents, Mel, Angela, Sam and Gary. Please grant them wisdom, help them to support and guide Ruby and Finley throughout their lives. And Lord, in, our, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for, for the, the sake, sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Great. So while Wendy is uh, putting the kite up, I just wanted to let you know 
that the next part of this service, we're all required to say something. So when I address the congregation, you will respond with, we will. So we'll start on page two. The words that I will say are slightly different to the ones that you have in the book. Just because Finley and Ruby are children, these are words for adults, so I've got a slightly different version here. But the response is the same. So when I address everybody, then please loud and clear say, we will. So I would like to now invite uh, the baptism family up here to the front. And for godparents to stand where they are. Thank you. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. We thank God for Finley and Ruby, who have come to be baptised today. Christ loves them and welcomes them into his church. So I ask you all, will you support these children as they begin their journey of faith? Will you help them to live and grow within God's family? And now this question is for parents and godparents. God knows each of us by name and we are his. Parents and godparents, you speak for Finley and Ruby today. Will you pray for them and help them to follow Christ? And so we're now going to light the Easter candle. So Mel, one of the godparents, is going to light it for us. Our Easter candle has a big cross on the front to remind us what Jesus did for us on the cross. And we light it because Jesus is the light of the world and always overcomes the darkness. So whatever situation we're going through, there is light and hope. And that's why we light this candle at this point. Well done. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. So this next question is for the parents and godparents to respond. We all wander far from God and lose our way. Christ comes to find us and welcomes us home. In baptism, we respond to his call. Therefore, I ask, do you turn away from sin? I do. do you reject evil? I do. do you turn to Christ as saviour? Do you trust in him as Lord? So now I'm going to anoint Finley and Ruby with holy oil. The oil that we have has come from the cathedral. The bishop has blessed this oil. And oil is a sign of God's abundance and his blessing and his anointing. Kings and queens throughout history have always been anointed with oil. And God sees Finley and Ruby as precious as kings and queens. And so I will anoint them by making a sign of the cross on their foreheads. Finley, Christ claims you for his own. Ruby, Christ claims you for his own. Now, parents, would you just like to do a sign of the cross in agreement with what I've just done?
So we will now all say the words on page four in bold. Do not be ashamed of Christ. You are his forever. Stand bravely with him against all the powers of evil and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. May almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. So if God parents and parents can follow me to the font and everybody else can turn around, mind the step. So I'm going to ask Gary, one of the godparents, to pour some water in It's quite heavy. Thank you. Pour it all in. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to pray over the water and the water will become holy for baptising Finley and Ruby. So this is an outward sign of, of the baptism, that refreshing Holy Spirit that we would love for Finley and Ruby. Praise God who made heaven and earth. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you, loving Father, for the gift of your Son Jesus. He was baptized in the River Jordan, where your Spirit came upon him and revealed him as the Son you love. He sent his followers to baptize all who turn to him. Now, Father, we ask you to bless this water. And those that are baptised in it may be cleansed in the water of life and filled with your Holy Spirit. May know that they are loved as your children safe in Christ forever. Amen. Let us all as a church affirm together with these who are being baptised our common faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in you. This is the faith of the church. Finley to come up. Hopefully he won't cry. Okay. What name do you give this child? Finley K. Finley K. I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ruby. Good girl, Ruby. Do you want to look at the water? Look at that water. It's lovely and warm. What name do you give this child? Ruby K. Ruby K. I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well done. And now a prayer for you both. May God, who has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people, you may daily be renewed by his anointing spirit and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Finley and Ruby, by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. We welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same Heavenly Father, and we welcome you. So we can all clap to welcome Finley and Ruby and cheer. Well done. Excellent. So, Finley and Ruby, would you like to lead us back to your seats? Thank you. Followed by Cliff. Yay! Come on. For the celebration. Just at the bottom of page six now, we remind ourselves of God's peace. So we are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And this is the moment where in these strange days we turn to one another and wave and smile and say hello as we recognise our part in God's family. And so we come now to the part of our service where we share communion together. In a moment I'll be preparing that. But for those of you who are here for the first time, just to let you know how we're doing that these days, um, so we just receive the communion in, in one kind, which is just the bread. So we're not sharing the wine. Um, I'll receive that on behalf of everyone. And the way we've been doing it in this church is when we come to the part where we distribute the bread, please remain standing if you'd like to receive in your, at your seats. We're, we're not yet coming up to the front. So remain where you are. If you want to receive, remain standing. Someone will know then to come to you. If you prefer just to receive a blessing, then please be seated. Hope that makes sense. For now, we're going to sing a song, which is one that's been chosen by the Baptism family. Make me a channel of your peace, number 437.
So I think I'll invite you now to be seated. If um, anyone needs a gluten-free wafer, just give me a little wave and I'll know. Okay. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the price for sin. On the night that he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. And so as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy Make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And so as your children born again in Christ, we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us your sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen.
So we're on page 10 now for our final prayers. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, preserve in your people the new life of baptism as Christ receives us on earth. So may he guide us through the trials of this world and enfold us in the joy of heaven, where you live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. We pray together. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Amen. Well, it's lovely to see you all today. I have a few notices. The first is to say that there is cake, I believe, after the service. Thank you to our baptism family for providing that. So do stay for a coffee or tea or, or whatever and a, and a piece of cake, which will be in the, in the York rooms. Um, either get to it via that route or through this door here. So do stay with us um, and enjoy the continued celebration for our baptism today. The second thing to say is that there is um, a Churches Together service which happens every fifth Sunday of the month. So that's today. That's at 6 p.m. and it will be at the United Reformed Church, the URC Church in Oxted. So um, if you feel like you'd like to be part of that, then do go along this evening at six o'clock. And the third thing to say is that our um, newsletter for September is hot off the press. Um, we've, we've started doing a monthly newsletter now, so if you know anyone who isn't online and not receiving our emails, please do deliver them or take them one of these. And if you'd like to have a look anyway, then please feel free to take your own copy too. And finally, um, I think we're all feeling... Um, you know, quite helpless really with, the, with what's happening in Afghanistan. So as we often do in these kinds of situations, we'll be having a special collection today for Tear Fund, who is, is out there helping lots of people with lots of aid in different ways. Um, and so if you'd like to give specifically to the, the needs in Afghanistan today, then there's a white plate, which is on this side. Uh, there's also a, a card reader there, so you can give by card. So as you go out, the plate on the right-hand side is for Afghanistan. The one on the left, I think, oh no, not on the left. Also on the right, that's confusing. Um, the furthest right, <laughs> next to the wall, is a gold plate, and that's for the work of this church. So feel free to, to give in whatever way you wish, if you'd like to. So I invite you now to stand... Our final blessing for everyone, and then after that, Lotwina will come as we give our two baptism candidates their candles. And so may the Father from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and all those you love in this life and the next, and be with you forevermore. Amen. Amen. So I'd like to invite Sam and Angela up to light the baptism candles for Finley and Ruby. The candles are here, if you could light them from the Easter candle. This symbolises that we're sending Ruby and Finlay out with the light of Christ. So Sam and Angela are going to give this to Finlay and Ruby's parents just as a sign that, you know, that Christ's light goes with them. And as they go out, that they will be people who light up the world, whether that's with their smile or whatever gifts and talents God has given them. So that's their candle. I'm going to pray a fat final prayer. God, 
has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. You have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Shine, Shine as, as a light in the world, world to, to the, the glory of God, God the Father. Father. Go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And so we're going to sing a wonderful hymn for a baptism day, number 503, O oh Jesus, I Have Promised. Cake, and when people come out, we'll remind them to, to go, go join you. So, I've got certificates for you all, so go without me giving you your certificates. So, it's an honor. That was my first one. <laughs> Did you do that? 
Charlie. And your little one. This is Lang. Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Did you enjoy the service? I love your sharks. <laughs> wonderful to be here and yeah, I'm really, really thankful. I was at Theological College. 